Hey folks, it's me again here. Hopefully everybody can hear you. I've got the camera a little bit away from me. I'm going to try to speak up tonight, but I'm here at my news desk. I'm going to start producing a news show. I'm not. Um, what I've got here is a, a pallet table that Karen and I made. Mainly Karen, and of course we didn't make the butcher block, but I stained the butcher block. And this will be, I hope, a good addition to being able to show you guys what I do as far as mixing paint and, and some things that I'm going to do here on this video as well. Uh, it, it's a nice looking area. What I had been using is just a fold up table and it looked awful. Uh, this looks nice. Now I'm worried about getting paint on it. But I actually have a uh, 18 by 24 inch piece of glass coming that will cover uh, the table and will be my palette. So I'll just be able to clean that up fairly easily. You can also see behind me maybe, hopefully, I hope I'm not that big, um, my easel. And everybody keeps asking about the easel. We've painted it. I hope it looks a little better on the camera when you guys are watching those videos. But uh, I will do a video on, once I get the palette table the way I want and everything, I'm going to do a video on the easel. I promise to do one this week because people keep asking me and I keep promising to do one. So uh, I promise to do it this week because the... I believe the piece of glass is coming on Thursday, so I'll do that probably for a Thursday video at some point. And I'll show you this. It's an easel behind me. It looks really nice now that we've stained it and I've painted the walls. You could easily build something like this for probably 75 bucks. I used a little bit better lumber, or I should say my wife. Karen used a little bit better lumber. I have no skills. She's the one that put it together. I helped, you know, with the screwing the boards together. That's about it. And I did stain it, so... Uh, you know, I've got at least that going for me. But $75, uh, a wall easel that will hold up to an 8-foot canvas. Uh, either way. So, I mean, you could paint a huge, you, you know, just a humongous canvas on this thing. And it works well and holds well. And you can also just use it to display your art just like I'm doing right now. I don't have anything great up here. But I'll show you how that attaches, how these things are hung on the easel and all that on Thursday. Thursday or Friday. Let's just say that so I don't. I don't um, let you down. Um, but I want to show you everything and kind of show you this and, and show you some other ideas I have for this table. But what I want to do tonight is real quick just show you a canvas. Isn't that nice? You've never seen one of these, have you? Now, what I want to do is I want to gesso a canvas and talk a bit about gesso. So I actually have some Bob Ross black gesso here. And in a second, I'll get a couple other colors out just so you can see those. But, uh, gesso is an important process in uh, oil painting especially. So the gesso is, is typically some paint, uh, usually some chalk, and then usually some kind of binder. And, and the thing I didn't know is that they usually use something like uh, rabbit glue or something is what I've read. I don't like that, but that's, I guess that's what we've got to use. So other, uh, some kind of uh, binder is what you need to make gesso. So it's a glue, essentially. So this is just a white canvas, and we're, gonna, we're going to put black gesso on it. And I'm going to show you what I use and what I believe everyone should use to gesso a canvas. Don't use a brush. Don't use a foam applicator or a foam brush. It doesn't work well. What I've got in that bag will, will really change your world if you need to gesso a canvas. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm back here at the, we're just gonna call this the pallet table from now on, I guess. But you can see it's, you get a little closer view of it. It's actually, ooh, it's really nice. Like a piece of furniture. Um, it's only gonna get better from here, so. So what I have, just so you guys can see, is I have some black gesso, and that's what I'm gonna use for this canvas. Bob Ross Company also makes gray gesso, right? And this is an old bottle, but they also make white gesso, of course. So the white gesso, any of these colors, is great to have on hand. If you've got a cheap canvas, guys, make sure you put a, at least one coat of uh, white gesso on a cheap canvas. Like when I say cheap, I mean like the packs you buy at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. This canvas is actually a Sunbelt canvas, and it's, it's quite good. The only complaint I ever have about Sunbelt canvases is sometimes they need a little gesso too. But it's, it's a very thick canvas and it feels good. Once you get to the point to where you're painting a lot and you, um, you know, you can afford 
to pay a little more for a canvas, do it. Because it's worth it. You'll, you'll feel a difference immediately. But this one's already has gesso on it. It's got, uh, I would probably just paint on that. It looks fine. Uh, more gesso doesn't necessarily hurt. Um, so you can always just gesso your canvases to be, be sure. But the thing, and I'm going to get paint all over me. So you're just going to look at my hand with black gesso all over it. But the thing that I use, and I would encourage you buying, and I wish I had a clean one to show you, but this is one I've had for about three, four months now, is one of these little, what is this called? It's called a Handy Painter, and it came from Lowe's. I think it was less than a dollar, and it's just a painting pad. And these are the disposable ones made out of styrofoam. Uh, you can buy more expensive ones, but there's no point. These will keep for months on end if you keep them sealed in a Ziploc bag. Okay. Now, what you don't want to do is have black gesso and then try to use white gesso. Don't do that. But what I want to do is uh, encourage you to get rid of a brush, get rid of a foam brush, uh, and get one of these applicators like this. It really works so much better. So what I like, what I like to do is just put a little gesso on the canvas. And just a little bit here because there's some in that brush already. Remember, you can always add more. Uh, you don't need a ton of gesso on any of these canvases that are already pre-gessoed. Even the cheap ones, you don't need like an inch of gesso put on them to make them effective. So what you want to do here is take this, this nasty looking thing, right? But it's still wet because I keep it in that bag. And I like to just scrub essentially or, or really just kind of little circles around that canvas. Let's see if I can hold this here so you can see it and grabbing that paint and working it all the way around the canvas and like i said i think at least i hope i said this is very this stuff this, if you painted before you don't need to see you don't need to watch this you can watch and laugh at me or something but when i first started painting i didn't know what the heck i was doing so little videos like this would have been awesome and i never found any honestly so that's why i wanted to do one but there is a canvas covered in black gesso. Now, once you've scrubbed all that in, I usually, like I said, just kind of move it around. What I like to do is, is even it all back out with a little bit of pressure, just kind of run up that canvas and going with the weave of the canvas. That way it dries nice and even. And if I had a little excess pool somewhere, it would grab that and kind of move that up into the brush maybe or, or handy painter, whatever we'll call it. Foam, um, not a foam applicator, but a paint applicator. Until you don't see any lines or anything. And that's all there is to gesso in a canvas. Now, on this one, I won't do it on the video because it'll get everywhere. I'll take it over here where it doesn't matter. I would also do the sides if you're using black gesso. If you're doing white, you wouldn't even need to worry about the sides. But, again, uh, less than a dollar from Lowe's, I'm sure, or Walmart. Home Depot has similar items, or, you know, the dollar store probably even has things like this. But this is, and this will keep for months on end, however long you want to. So you can have your one with black gesso, white gesso, and gray gesso if you want to. So that's all there is to gesso in a canvas. That's it. So I thought that might be a helpful little tip for some folks, especially folks just starting out. And again, if you're buying those cheap canvases that, we all buy at times. Make sure that you uh, are gessoing your canvas because the, the potential you have there is bleed through on the back. The oil could actually bleed through on the back of the canvas. You don't want that. Uh, the gesso also protects the painting from cracking. So, you know, when you make your masterpiece and it's around for thousands of years, you know, you don't want that thing to start, you know, cracking. I guess you won't care, but somebody might. So there's a little thing about gesso. If you've got any questions about gesso, uh, just yell at me in the comments. If you think these are helpful, just give me a thumbs up down there in the corner and uh, like and subscribe and share. And that's always helpful for me and I appreciate all you guys for watching. Uh, I still don't understand why anyone wants to watch me, but I appreciate all of you guys watching. Uh, and I'll keep trying to make these videos for you. So there it is, uh, and again, I'll be back here soon with a painting, uh, and I'll also be back on here soon. We'll talk about the easel that was behind me earlier, and the pallet table. So you get two for one there in the next, next little bit for a video. But there you go. There's how to gesso a canvas.